What's up, guys? Welcome to Kyra's Cucina. I'm Kyra DeFalco. Special guest with me today, Chef Eric Levine. You give your title because I'm going to mess it up because you uh, just changed what you're doing. <laughs> Chef partner at uh, Mr. Krabby's in Randolph, New Jersey. Very cool. So he is here. He's going to be showing us a seasonal risotto recipe, and we're going to be talk to him, talking to him about all these great projects that he's going on. One of them is us teaming up together. We're doing uh, Taste of Hope, New yep. Jersey, coming up next month. So we're going to tell you guys all about that. It's all getting started right now. Great food isn't just about good ingredients and knowing how to cook. It's about telling the story of the food. All right, Chef, what kind of risotto are we making today? Okay, so this risotto is one of the uh, new dishes that we're doing as, at the restaurant as we relaunch. It's also in my new cookbook, Burgers, Bowls, and Jars. Nice. So it's a sausage, wild mushroom risotto. It's one of those dishes that has lots of flavor. It's very comforting. Yes. Uh, for the time of the year now that we're going into the fall, it's got that earthy tone, lots of flavors. But there are a few important things that people need to know about risotto. One of the first things, and I learned this years ago uh, with uh, Andre Bojoli, who taught me how to make risotto when I was 13, 14 years old, use a wood spoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Reason being, well, I didn't know why. I thought it was okay, so Okay, now, so now in my house we only use wood spoons, so I, I, you know, it would seem so logical to me, but there's a reason. Right, there's a science behind it, because when you use a stainless steel spoon um, and you're in a stainless steel pot, it microfibers come off the spoon. Ah. With a wood spoon, you never have that problem. Right. The other thing that's important for people to know is you can't rush risotto. Yes. It's like a relationship. It starts, takes time. Yeah, it takes time. And then, you know, it starts off hot and simmery. <laughs> and then you gotta let it kind of mellow out and you gotta stir it with the love and you gotta have fun with it and build the flavors to that. So for this one here in particular, uh, we have a wild mushroom stock. Okay. And uh, the mushroom stock, we just use cremini mushroom stems, portobello mushroom stems. We use shiitake mushroom stems, uh, little shallots little white wine and then we finished it with uh, vegetable broth and you can use chicken broth if you don't have time to make it or right. if you can't find it in the store but always we'll start with a hot broth that's important when you're actually making the risotto itself yeah so we've had this on on low we can see it's, it's steaming a little right. bit so this is pretty much ready to go right so this actually we're gonna make with a little bit of truffle oil Ooh. so people can either start I like to start with the truffle oil but it's important that when you're making the risotto that you have the hot stock. You have all your mise en place or everything together. So yes. we have our arborio rice, shallots, sliced garlic. We have the sausage, which we already cooked off and sliced. Cooked, okay. Uh, to finish, we have uh, butter and uh, Reggiano Parmesan. Mm. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in because we're going to lightly toast the, ris the actual arborio. The yeah. And people make the mistake. It's not pasta. Uh, they think that it's a... It's a starch, so they automatically assume because it's kind of like orzo looking that it's a pasta. It's not. No. It's a rice. It's a grain. Yes. So it is actually gluten free for those who are in that mindset. Yes, yeah. I, I have had this conversation with several people that I've had to uh, teach. You know and what exactly was gluten free yeah. and what what was not. So. Yep. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with some of the sliced shallots. Shallots. Love shallots. I'd rather use it than the red onion or white onion. I think it has a, a better flavor profile to it, a little yeah. bit sweeter yeah. to it. A little bit of uh, sliced garlic. I really can't have too much garlic. Never, ever, ever, ever. So while we're getting yeah. this going, let's talk a little bit about actually, because I was just thinking, because you know, both shallots and garlic are uh, very good for you detoxifying the body. Yes. Uh, and we are doing a little something that's uh, good for some folks who are. are uh, Suffering a little bit, we're doing American Cancer Society's Taste of Hope. Yes, in October. Uh, October. Yep. Tickets are available. Yes. If and you yeah. To, to what are you going to be showcasing? Do you know yet? No, I'm not 100 percent sure. What I try to do because I'm one of the chairs with uh, Diane Hendricks. Yes. I try to wait until all the chefs submit their food. So I'll be the last one. You're in. the so, last one to pick. So let them do their magic, whatever and then they're I'll do, whatever's and you'll come up with something else. Yeah, whatever whatever's missing, I like to I like to do. <laughs> so with this, so you get a little bit of that that the flavor profile going in the garlic, a little bit of salt. And I only use kosher salt. Um, most of the time, people use iodized salt, and the only thing iodized salt is good for, if you live in Jersey, is the, is the sidewalk when it snows. Yes. Yeah. Now that's about all too far. A little uh, fresh black pepper. I always try to understand what people are cooking, why they season at the end rather than at the beginning. Throughout. It, you gotta cook, cook your food season throughout. Taste as you go, taste as you go. That's so important. People make the mistake of just throwing it in and trying to have that salt and pepper mix into it at the last second. Last minute, work. yeah. 
So now we're just gonna add the risotto to it, the aborio, and we're gonna mix it. So we're gonna get a nice little color on this, and then we're gonna lower the temperature. Then we're gonna first, then we're gonna add our first batch of the uh, stock itself. And it's important to do that and bring it, it comes up to a, a, almost a hard boil and then lower to a simmer. Important, another thing is to keep stirring it throughout the whole time. So if someone makes a risotto for you anywhere in 15 minutes, it's wrong. Something, Throw it yeah, out. Something, something, wrong. something went yeah, wrong. Yeah, unless you could divide, you know, you know if, unless you can uh, change the force of nature. Yeah. Uh, it just is impossible to cook it that quick. That's why I like watching TV shows and you know there's no possible way in a competition show that you could cook risotto in less than 23 minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah it really it does take that, that, that time. Yep. Uh, but it's important for this, you add the, the stock in batches, four batches, slow cook, and then you can finish it with everything else. And doing this, the, the rice is absorbing the oil that we put in there, so it's right. getting those flavors that we already have established in. Right, and it's it, and while it's also it's also bringing it, pulling everything in, and it'll give it much more flavor when it actually finishes cooking. Mm -hmm. All that flavor profile will be in that, and you know it's important at the start to get that translucent flavor, that translucency into the actual rice itself. Yeah. Then adding the stock into it. So. Now, and Chef, you said this is one of the recipes that's in your upcoming book, which will be out the end of November. November no, end of November, beginning of December. Uh, burgers, it's bowls, for the and holidays. jars. Yes, it'll be perfect. It'll be on Amazon um, and uh, through my website, ChefEricLevine.com. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to order it directly. You can pre order it now. Okay. And when it comes out, you'll have a copy of it. And, and what kind of. Okay, so burgers, bowls, and jars kind of gives us an idea of, of what's in there. What, are you, what do you want people to get from that book? Well, it's broken down to each season. Okay. Which is really cool. So each season has different styles of burgers, different types of bowls, which will be rice bowls, will be noodle bowls, will be pasta bowls. Uh, garden bowls, you know, I think, Buddha Buddha bowls. Bowls. Yeah, which are all exactly. very popular yeah. right now. Yes. So that's that's one of those things that I think seasonally people need to pay attention to yes. what's available, uh, what's at its peak. Like we're getting, you know, in, in the summertime we get the best corn in the country. Absolutely, Jersey, Jersey corn is phenomenal. You're not going to find better tomatoes or corn anywhere. anywhere. And I'm not from Jersey. I'm from Brooklyn, but I can say <laughs> that without any question. But I am from Jersey, and I will tell you, they're still the very best. No, and they are. They really <laughs> they truly are. are. Like yes. I, I've always been one of. You know, use local, but you know, you get corn, you get corn. Now I won't use anything but Jersey corn because it, it's just the flavors. And, and you know, I, I do a lot of work with Donaldson Farms, and the corn is just amazing. Yes. It's like I don't even cook it; I peel it, I just wash it a little bit, and I eat it. Eat it. Eat it. People go crazy when when they see me eating the corn raw. raw. I'm like, what are you? What? It, You're gonna boil the hell out of it. You lose all the nutrients. You lose a lot of the flavor. Eat it raw. Yes, yeah, it's or just fine. grill it quick. That's what I yeah. say. Yeah. All right. So we're about ready for our we're first. Ready here? Yep. You want to okay. go ahead and yes. add your first. There you go. Tell me when. A little more? Yep. A little bit more. There you go. Perfect. You go. So we're putting enough of the uh, stock in here just to have it cover the top of the uh, the rice itself. Okay. All right, and then at this point, because it's boiling, now we're just gonna lower the heat down just a little bit. But again, it's we're gonna keep it moving. It's always about that that movement, and, then, and I go back to what I said before and how I was taught. It's about that relationship. It's about that that connection with people. Yes. It's food, and the the connection in the in how it's prepared is so important to just get that that passion going, that love going. And yes. It's so it it really it's funny how parallel food and people and relationships are. Absolutely. You know? Well, I mean, I, you, I and you and I agree on this. I, there's no greater gift you can give someone than Absolutely. A, plate, a, a homemade yeah. plate of food. Exactly. And, and you know what? It's, it's become, you know, getting people back to the table. That's another reason why I wrote this book. I want people to come back to the table and cook with the family. And listen, I'm, I'm in the restaurant business. I want everyone, every <laughs> customer come coming out, in. But, <laughs> but I also want them to, to get back to the kitchen. Because yes. I remember growing up as a kid, even though we had very, 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 very little money, uh, we always, my mom or my grandma would always have food going. Uh, my grandmother, you know, we were poor. But whatever she made, it was from love. It was yes. from that, that people, people miss that. People, you know, they were so disconnected, were so caught up in, in social media and, and, and moving fast. Sometimes just stop and take a breath and cook a, you know, cook a pan of risotto. I, and then, hey, listen, that's always my message as well and, and so much of why we do Cucina because it is, it's a lost art. You know, people, I think people get intimidated and they don't realize that 
You're very capable of cooking for yourself. It's an, an easy thing Absolutely. to do. You're not going to mess it up because, especially with cooking, you know, baking is a little more exact. Yeah, cooking, with cooking, you can play. There's you lots play. of room there's, to you play. Don't have to, you don't have to be a chef or a culinary no. educated person. It's just taking flavors. It's like going to the marketplace. It's like stuff that you and like. Find, and, but also finding things that you've never tried before. Yes. I try to go at least once, twice a month to a market that I've never been to, find three items I've never cooked with before. All of a sudden, I bring it back to the kitchen, and my guys are like, what the hell is that? And I try to figure out what it figure is. Figure out what it is. And then what are we gonna do with I it? cook with it and see what happens. And how, what I'm doing this, I hate to say it this long, but 38 years since I'm 11. <laughs> and I love it. I don't, there's nothing I'd rather do. Yeah. There's nothing. It's cooking. It's food. It's great. It's, a, you know, it's life. You know? You want a little more? Yeah. Yeah. Get on in here. You know? And that's, and that's how it should be. It should be cooking with people you love, being around people who, who you want to share with. And sometimes you get to do charity work where uh, you're, you're doing it for a great cause. So you're taking what you do and you love and you're passionate about and you're sharing it with others. You know, where you know, most chefs I know aren't millionaires. Uh, you know, Very we, true. We, but what we do is, is we cook and we're millionaires that way. Yes. You know, we're so rich in what we do and, and love what we do that it comes across to people as nurturing. Yes. And that's how, that's what food should be. I mean, food, that's what food is about. That's absolutely. It's about that nurturing sustenance to make someone feel good. Yes. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be a simple little thing. Like my guys in the kitchen, you know, when they take melon, like watermelon or, or honeydew mm -hmm. or cantaloupe, and they put a little, squeeze a little bit of lemon or lime on it, a little salt, it takes that, that flavor profile, that item, to a whole different world. And it's like that. How simple is how that? How simple was that? You know, absolutely. And then, and you know, like I always uh, tell our Kachina viewers too. You know, if I'm making something and it's you know not the way you remember or it's something that you don't like, put in what you like. Yeah. You know, so you know, it's you, flexible. you started with yeah. shallots. Maybe you love onions. Right. Start with onions. It's well, it's your food. It's your dinner. Right. And maybe you don't like garlic, but you, that'd be weird. But, but that's yes. a whole different story. <laughs> but. Yeah, so don't put the garlic in. And maybe you don't want to use a mushroom stock. Maybe you want to use a beef stock, or you want to make it seafood. Use a seafood stock. Absolutely. And it's all in how it's food. Yeah. There is no science there's no right as far or wrong as there's no. Yeah, do exactly. It. It's how what makes you baking different story. Different story. It is much more scientific. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've made a couple of those mistakes, but that again, that's also a a, a, a dying art. In, in it's cooking. true. And baking is not done the way it used to be. It's so manufactured now that for our restaurants. We're gonna get back to that. We're gonna want a little more. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get back to making everything in house. You know, gelatos and sorbets and all our, our desserts. And we we have probably sixty percent of our desserts right now are all made are made in house. But within by the time you know this airs and this we'll have all the desserts in house made. That's awesome. Uh, so talk to me a little bit more about the restaurant then. So you are. Uh, you had so two this, restaurants. You stepped away from them, and now you're you're starting someplace new, and you're kind of re reinventing that. Reinventing yeah, yeah. it. So um, yes, I left my previous restaurants and uh, joined a group uh, that has the same vision that I have, and they basically said, "Here's Mr. Krabby's. Do what you got to do with it to make it work and right." So uh, the focus was heavy seafood. It was a seafood house. Mm -hmm. Now it has seafood and more. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Krabby's is uh, Mr. Krabby's Craft Kitchen and Bar, and you know we have things that are different. So we still have our great uh, classic pots, we still have our great crab cakes, uh, raw bar, but we've also added things like this risotto. We've also you know we have a, a brick oven pizza, and we're gonna be we're doing like a, a roasted octopus. Uh, with mm. ancho, uh, potato, and, and, and an ancho sauce, and, and, and chorizo sausage, which wow. all the sausages we're making in-house now as well. Awesome. So for all the different dishes. Which is something you've done. I know you've yes, did a lot yeah, of yeah. your own yeah. uh, meat marketing and yeah. butchering your and, and, yes. and that's an important part for me as a chef, as a cook. I want to cook everything I can in-house. Yeah. I want to make it fresh. Not that there aren't some great company, uh, or, um, places like, yeah. you know, like Fossil Farms. Yes. They do amazing work. They're, they're, those guys just... Hands down, the best around. I'm there every couple of oh, weeks. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, so you know. Yes. And, but when you can make it in house, and, and also for me, educating my staff. Yes. Teaching them how to make it from scratch, and seeing their eyes light up. That's the greatest thing. You know, when they're excited about that, and they're feeling the love about food the way I do. Um, it's it's magical. You want to dump the last yeah, yeah, yeah. You? It's it's absolutely magical. You know, when you, when you see your staff get excited the way you do about food. About, yeah. Um, it comes out in the dish. It comes out to the customer. And that ultimately is what we do. We're here for our customers. And yeah. I tell my staff all the time, my only reason I exist is to take care of the customers and, and them. 
And it's not just, it, it's about everyone on the team. It's about the entire experience for everybody because my guys work 10, 12, 14 hour days, five, six days a week. Yeah. And if, you don't, if you're not with people that you enjoy being around, it's gonna be a long That's couple a long of long day. It's a long day. <laughs> but you know, you find you find that um, that it's easy to do great things with great people. Absolutely. And I have great people that are I surrounded myself with that motivate me to be better. Uh, you know, even at the gym, and and just constantly building. So um, you know, Dizzy Indian, who are my partners, um, they also own uh, the barn in. Uh, Rockaway and Black, Black River Barn, Cinders, uh, The Mansion, Pizza Pub. So they're very involved in lots of different things. Mm -hmm. So when, when we met and we talked, um, it was about how to fix and make Mr. Krabby's even better. Yeah. You know, um, with great food and great creative things. So we're putting, you know, we have a chef's table where people can come in for six to eight people and have a dinner with me if they want. Yes. More of an elevated experience or just hang out at the open kitchen. Uh, and we have a garden, a, wall, a living wall garden. So we pick our fresh herbs and spices every day. Right off the wall. So if the bartender needs mint, boom, we click right there. That's amazing. Uh, garnishes, microgreens, uh, scallions, basil, it's all there. That's it's all amazing. there. So it's kind of a fun thing to do. I'm a little, you know, I'm excited about this, all, this whole process and, and doing it. There's a lot more coming in the future. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff. And you, you're just, as of this uh, going to, to air, if you will, or coming online, you've just relaunched the new menu and, and things like that yes. with the, with the yeah. restaurant and certainly so it's more all, coming. So it's all new stuff. I mean, we do, well, I should say all new because we still have our classic yes. crabby stuff. So we still have lobsters and crab, uh, crab meat and we still have all the pots and, and lots of great stuff. Yes. But we added next level because there are people who don't like seafood, right. who wanted to have an experience, but oh, we want to go to have seafood. Well, I don't like seafood. Right. And we also have vegan dishes. Which, I, and which I was is, just yeah. going to ask you because that's always something that you've yeah. done where you were like, I want a group of people that contains anybody to come into any one of my yep. restaurants, sit down, and everybody can have a meal that they love. Yes, with the people they love. With the people they love. Yeah. So we've added uh, five, six different vegan dishes. Amazing. Uh, some really cool stuff. Um, this, we have this black quinoa, which is just out of control with some uh, cranberries and almond. It has a little butternut squash and this apple vinaigrette Ooh. that we make from tofu. What? Yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's, and so we have um, some really good options and, and lots of fun with it. You know, that's what it's about and, and giving options to our customers. Even the Impossible Burger, um, which is a plant-based burger, people love it. And, and we have it, so it's another thing that we get to offer. Yeah. And then we have great pasta. Our raviolis are being made in-house. Um, our noodles, uh, we have a couple of Asian noodles, uh, like Dishes. ramen. Yeah. So it's it's kind of fun to be able to offer that as well. A little bit of everything. Yep, yep. Is this chicken sausage? Yep. Is there a reason you want and chicken sausage? Or just... Well, because um, I wanted to be able to incorporate three different sausages into the menu. So we have the chorizo, the Italian, and the chicken one. And, and I always find that everybody uses Italian sausage, which is nothing wrong with that. I was that. gonna say, I mean. Nothing wrong at all with that. <laughs> and even sometimes spicy. But how often do we use a great chicken sausage? You know? I, and uh, I've and, had a few really great chicken sausages, and you're right, they are underutilized. Yeah. I think there's a lot, of, you know, we get so used to doing things in, in one specific way that sometimes we forget about other options. You know, that there's always something new out there. Right. And as long as you're willing to try. Well, and know? I think that goes back, and I like that I like that as a challenge to the viewers even. Go out there, find something you've never cooked before. Absolutely. Bring it home, cook with it. Cook with it, try it. Or the, look up the recipe trying. online. You know, yeah. find, search me, search yeah, you. Yeah. One of us probably has a recipe for it. Probably, at least one. <laughs> at least this one. one. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you're gonna have the shallots. I'm and gonna you can both of them, go for I'm it. Just, I'm just putting it all in there, yeah. Right. We're, going, we're going full shebang here. Gonna add a little bit of salt. So we're making that with truffle oil. Yes. And actually in the in the new cookbook, um, I learned from my friend Ming Tsai how to make poor man's truffles. Okay. Okay, so what he did Do was- Do tell, because so I know they're yeah, expensive. Yeah. So he took cremini mushroom, okay. shaved them really, really thin, mm -hmm. and actually slow steeped in room temperature in truffle oil. Okay. So it was another way of having that truffle flavor, and it is mushroom. So, you know, it's still in that same family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, the, it just became a thing. So one of the recipes that we have in uh, burgers, bowls, and jars showcases that. You know, I, I think it's kind of it. a fun way to, to still have the truffle flavor, flavor. profile. Mushrooms in there, because, you know, mushrooms absorb the oil. Yes. Like you have right now. And uh, a little black pepper in there. 
And then here you'll do is, you have, we already have the sausage cooked off. Yeah. You can add it right to that. Woo! I'm losing mushrooms. Yeah. All right, so. I got excited. As you should. As I should, yes. As you should. So the risotto is uh, done. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the fire, the flame off, and I'm gonna finish it with a little touch of the truffle oil. A little bit of butter. And just a little bit of uh, shaved Parmesan. And then what we'll do is we'll incorporate that into here. So you can do that ahead of time and heat it up and then fold it in. There you go. Beautiful. Like you did this before, huh? I did, you know. Maybe, maybe once, once or twice, while. right? Maybe Fine. once or twice. Once or, tw oh, once or that twice. Guy out of there. So now it's the ultimate test. So you gotta get yourself a spoon. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna plate this up and, okay. and check it out. All right. All right, guys, we are about to dive into this risotto. You can find the recipe at CaraDeFalco.com. You can find the recipe and more in Burgers, Bowls, and Jars right. out in November. And you can just go get the dish at Mr. Krabby's in Randolph, New Jersey. And Chef will be there to cook it up always. for you. Absolutely. Always. Thank you so much. Thank I always love to have well, you around. You. All right, you. let's dive in. Let's see what we did here, there what you, you did. Because this smells amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that truffle. It's so good. That doesn't suck.